Let's hear our scripture lesson for the day. Turn in your Bibles to the, uh, I said about the First Testament. It's the New Testament. We'll be in the book of Mark, chapter 9, verses 2 through 9, and this is the Common English Bible translation. And it says, Six days later, Jesus took Peter, James, and John and brought them to the top of a very high mountain where they were alone. He was transformed in front of them, and his clothes were amazingly bright, brighter than if they had been bleached white. Elijah and Moses appeared and were talking with Jesus. Peter reacted to all of this by saying to Jesus, Rabbi, it's good that we're here. Let's make three shrines, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He said this because he didn't know how to respond, for the three of them were terrified. Then a cloud overshadowed them, and a voice spoke from the cloud, This is my son, whom I dearly love. Listen to him. Suddenly, looking around, they no longer saw anyone with them except Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, he ordered them not to tell anyone what they had seen until after the human one had risen from the dead. This is the word of our Lord. Thanks be to God. This story we just heard, it starts with something overwhelming and then it ends with something very basic. Now, now first the overwhelming part. In 2014, I visited the largest church in Indiana. It's just, it was two miles from where I lived in Northwest Indiana. And I was on sabbatical for the summer. And every Sunday I visited a church and wrote about each experience and learned a lot from visiting a lot of different churches. And I visited some of the biggest churches in the country. And there was a Sunday I was supposed to be somewhere else. And I don't even remember what it was, but it got canceled. And I thought, well, okay, I'll just go two miles down the road. But I was hesitant because it has a reputation for really putting on an extravaganza. Now, I don't mind visiting mega churches. Most of them I can handle. I've learned a little bit uh, from each one that I visited, but, but this one, it really, it goes all out. And I got there and they had a choir kind of set up on multiple levels. Like if you've ever seen a living Christmas tree, sort of like that, several stories of a, of a choir and this big, huge, loud band and, and lights swirling around everywhere and smoke machine it came time for the offering and they had this, it was like this Ark of the Covenant or something, but it was motorized. It was on this motorized cart that came down, rolled down to the front, and then people were supposed to go up and put their offerings in it. And this church, they do lots of theatrical kind of things, with lots of stage props and things like that. And and the pastor is preaching and, and there was something about this idea of moving was a part of his sermon. And the curtain opens up a little wider than it had been already. And there's this, this moving truck is on stage. A U-Haul truck is up there on stage. And people are taking moving boxes, loading them in there, all to illustrate the pastor's point. And all of this, you know, it was not my cup of tea, but who am I to judge? They, they have more people coming than any other church in the state. So like I said, who am I to judge? But I said, when it was over, I wanted to just go home and sit in a dimly lit quiet room just to kind of decompress from the whole experience. It was overwhelming. The story starts with an overwhelming experience. Just a, for just a few, Peter, James, and John, they go up with Jesus up on top of a mountain with him. And it says that Jesus was transfigured, and which simply means that his appearance was changed. They, they see Jesus in all of his heavenly glory. His face shines like the sun. His clothes are dazzling white. And Moses and Elijah are there too. These heroes from the, the Old Testament are there speaking with Jesus. Now, up to this point, Peter, James, and John, they can handle it. But there's a point where it begins to be too much for them. It says a, a bright cloud overshadows them. Uh, I, I think of when you're on a plane and you're uh, going up and you go through the clouds and it's just clouds all around you. I, that's what I think of when I, when I hear this story. Um, and then there's a voice from the cloud. And at this point, it's too much. These disciples, they fall to the ground. They're overcome by fear. They're, they're overwhelmed by the experience. 
Now, no matter how overwhelming, no matter how beautiful, no matter how extraordinary this experience was for them, something is said that I hope that they heard and and I hope that we hear too. Something very basic is said. This voice from the cloud, God's voice, this is my son, the beloved. With him, I'm well pleased. Now, if you rewind the story back a few weeks ago when we talked about Jesus' baptism, the same thing was said at Jesus' baptism. This is my son, the beloved with him. I'm well pleased. But then one thing is added to it. Listen to him. I hope Peter, James, and John heard that. I hope we hear it too. Listen to him. I taught a class several years ago, went for about five weeks, where we talked about listening. And we said that that listening is something that Christians should do, that, that each person is a creation of God, worthy of respect, worthy of love, worthy to be heard. And so, so that's something that we as Christians should, should be able to do is to, to listen to each other. And we talked about skills for listening, how to do it well. And one thing that I took from that was, after talking about it for several weeks, was I'm not always very good at listening. It was years ago, I was when I was working uh, with the, the church I was a part of in college, that we took the youth from the church on this work trip. And there was uh, me and another other adult were, were taking the youth there. And Dawn was the other adult was her name. She's a disciples pastor now too. And we'd been driving all day and we'd been all, out uh, on the road for a week and we were headed home and we'd stopped at a Wendy's. And you know how they have those rows that kind of go back and forth um, where you go up to, to order there at, at Wendy's. And so we're standing in the, these rows waiting to order. And she's trying to tell me something, uh, trying to talk to me about something. And I was tired and I was distracted and I was just thinking about getting my food. And eventually she said, she said, hey, you're not listening to me. You're, you're not hearing what I'm, I'm telling you. Well, she was right. I, I, I wasn't listening. But how many times is that story played out? And the person may not call us out on it, but how many times are, are we just, we're not listening? The other person is talking. We're only thinking about what we're going to say next. Or the person is talking, but we're thinking about what we're, what we're going to do later in the day. Or the person is talking and, and we're just really not taking it in. We're judging the person before we're really giving that person a listen. It's hard, isn't it? I mean, listening is. It's, it's, just, it's hard work. This time of, of preaching into a camera uh, here to you this way, I, I've learned has, has been a challenge because whenever I'm speaking to an audience, I can usually tell, I can usually realize when, when I've lost you, when you're, you're no longer able to listen. It's, it's almost like uh, public speaking is like you're a guide leading people through a forest. And sometimes you look back and you realize you, you lost the crowd a, a, along the way. It's hard because I know it's hard work to listen. And so it's hard work public speaking, being and speaking in a way that helps you to listen. There are moments, though. Um, you probably notice them, too. When we do listen. I notice sometimes at night, if I'll wake up in the middle of the night or early in the morning and uh, the house is quiet, the furnace fan isn't blowing at the moment, the only sound heard is a ticking of a clock, maybe I can hear the, the refrigerator turn on in the kitchen, maybe I hear a train whistle off in the distance. I remember when, when I had my cat uh, sometimes waking up and, and the house was so quiet, I could hear his quiet breathing. There are those moments where whatever is going on inside of us, it, it gets quiet enough and we're able to listen. When, when that, that internal conversation, which, which we all have going, when it finally quiets, when we set the distractions aside, when we're able to truly hear another. I can think of times, you can probably think of it too, where uh, I'm conversing with another person, and I wasn't worried about what I had to do next. I wasn't thinking about how I was just going to refute whatever the person was saying. I wasn't waiting for the person to stop talking so I could say something, and, and I listened. And I was blessed in the listening. When we do, when we're able to listen, it's good, isn't it? It's it's really good for, for the one who's sharing, but also for the one who's listening. 
Well, for Peter, James, and John, I mean, they're up on top of the mountain. It's, it's dazzling. It's extraordinary. It gets overwhelming. It's all too much for them. But then something very basic is, is shared with them. And I hope they, they heard that what was told. This is my son, the beloved. With him I well pleased. Listen to him. Listen to him. Now, we know that Jesus did his fair share of talking. I mean, we have his teachings. So we have the Gospels where so, much, so many of his teachings are recorded, the, the parables, the stories that he told. Uh, we have uh, records of his conversations. As far as we know, that Jesus was not a man of few words. It was really only when he was on trial at, at the end where he grew quiet. We have these teachings, but if you're like me and you've hung around church for a while, you, you've heard many of them. You've heard the parables and the teachings and all of that. And there's, if you're like me, there's a part of me that kind of tunes out because I've heard it before. You know, I, I think, well, I hear blessed are the poor in spirit for this is the kingdom of God. And I'm thinking, yeah, 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 I've, I've heard this one before. Or a man set out from Jerusalem to Jericho and he fell into the hands of robbers who beat him, stripped him and left him half dead. And I'm thinking, yeah, yeah, I know it's the Samaritan is the one who's going to help him in the end. I mean, there's listening and there's listening, isn't there? And sometimes when I hear Jesus teaching, I, I, I don't listen anymore. I, I don't really hear it because, because my mind sort of tunes it out. But we're invited, I think, to truly listen. There was this guy I, I went to seminary with, and he could read scripture. I mean, it was just beautiful. And, and I know we've got some, some really good readers in, in our church, too. But he would read scripture, say if he would read scripture in, a, in our chapel service at the seminary. and and I would listen. He had this gift of like all of the things that in my mind, I, uh, that are going in my mind, I was able to turn them off and I would listen. And whenever he was done reading the scripture, I often thought we, we don't even need to hear the sermon. I mean, I, we've heard it already. It's so powerful. That's what we're invited to, I think, to, to truly listen to Jesus, to hear what he says. But even more than just what Jesus says, I, I wonder if we're invited to, to listen to Jesus' life. There was a family in a church I pastored years ago. A family member was dying, and I would check in on them. I tried to check in on them every day. They were a very prominent family in our church. Uh, the, the lady who was dying was, had done so much for us, and I'd spend some time with them every day as I could. And there was a, a sister. One, uh, one of her sisters was there, and and uh, she, you know, many days that I was there, she was there too. And one day she said to me, she said, I see you. She said, I've, I've been noticing you. And she said, you know, you, you remind me so much of a pastor we had years ago, you know, in, in what you do and, and how you act and how you're present here. You, you re, you're like him. Now, she wasn't necessarily talking about anything that I said but she was listening to me. She was taking note of me. She was, she was noticing me. She was taking note of my life. When we listen to Jesus, I think we, we hear not only what he says, but we also we listen to his life. We take notice of what he does, of how he lives, how he does things, how he treats people, how he handles situations. We, we listen to his life. Now, in a few days, we're going to begin the season of Lent. And you, know, you hear this every year, the 40 days before Easter. And if you've been around church, you've, you've heard this all before. You're probably thinking, yeah, yeah, Lent, repentance, renewal, preparation for Easter. And all of that is true and right. But I think Lent, too, is a time to listen to Jesus. It's a time where we, more intentionally, we open ourselves up to Jesus. I mean, this is a unique time for us here in this time where, where so much is canceled, where so much is where we're at home. And I think that this is, this is an opportune time for us to, to listen to Jesus. Uh, we, we've got some, some, some time on our hands, and it's not summer where we're busy with trips and activities. It's not a holiday where we're thinking about parties and gifts. It's a time of year where not a whole lot extra is going on anyway. And I hope, I hope in this, this season that we're about to begin, that we listen to Jesus. Because you see, in the season that's just about to start here, 
we walk with Jesus to the cross and we listen to him along the way. We hear his teachings. We notice how he acts. We see him at the cross. We listen to him. And more than just hearing the, the same old words, which we've heard before, uh, we, we listen. We listen to him. We quiet all of the other voices that would drown out what Jesus would say to us, the noises of media and the voices of guilt in our head and the constant chatter of our culture telling us, be this or do this or whatever. I mean, we, we set all of those things aside for a time. And we listen to Jesus. And we hear what he would say about the world, about God, about him, and about us. People of God, put yourself today with Peter, James, and John. Up on that mountain, overwhelmed and afraid, yet a voice from God tells them something. This is my son, the beloved. With him, I am well pleased. Listen to him. Amen.